Some would say that starting a business today in 2020 is actually a lot easier than it ever was. And you know what? I would probably agree. There's a lot of great resources out there. There's a lot of opportunity to be able to start a business really online. But there are a lot of things that can go wrong. And what I want to do here in this episode is I want to go over nine causes that really have made small businesses either struggle or that just have totally made them go out of business. So if you're interested in learning about these causes so you can prevent them, well, stick around because that's what we're going to cover in this episode. Hey, before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Also, if you're on YouTube, make sure that you click the little bell icon so you get notified when I go live with a new video. Well, hey, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Amazing Seller Podcast. This is episode number 806. And like I said, we're going to be covering these nine causes of failed small businesses. And we're going to go through each and every one of those. And let me just say this up front. These are preventable, by the way. A lot of times you just need to understand what they are and then create the business that is going to have the most chances of succeeding. And that's what I want to go through here on this episode. Now, you know, I talk all about building a brand, not just selling a one-off product. Well, as I go through these, you're going to see how these aren't really hard but you do need to understand what they are. So this way here, you can build that into your business and really start the business off on the right foot or recalibrate the business. Uh, So this way here, you have the best chance of succeeding. Now, if you're interested in going through my brand creators playbook, in this book, I go through the six parts of building a successful business. And this also goes for validating your market. And you're going to hear in one of these, that's one of the big, big reasons where businesses fail. All right. So if you're interested in that, head on over to brandcreatorsbook.com. Again, that's brandcreatorsbook.com. There's my little shameless plug. But let me just tell you, if you have no idea about building out a brand or you think you do, but you want to validate it, you definitely need to grab that resource. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. But the first one I want to just kind of go into is, you know, when we start a business, we are starting it for the most part, because we want to create freedom or we want to, you know, escape the rat race or the nine to five or the J O B, right? Any of that stuff. We are, are trying to escape that. We want freedom. We want the flexibility. When I first started my business, we're going back almost 20 years ago. Uh, I started a brick and mortar business with my wife in photography and it was great and it was awesome. But we soon found out that running a business isn't easy. Right? There's a lot of moving parts. Uh, you got to market it. You got to have a great product. You got to have good customer service, all of that stuff. But you know, when you start going through that process, you start to learn as well, right? And that's what I want you to understand is as you're going through this, you're learning. But the cool thing is, is because we have this, this internet thing where we, we get to listen to podcasts or we get to watch YouTube videos, we have a lot of information and resources. But the problem with that also Sometimes that that information gets confusing or you get misled and uh, we don't want to do that here. So that's why I wanted to kind of cover this. But there's one example here I want to share with you. And a lot of people, when they start a business, they're immediately thinking about, okay, I'm going to start this business and I'm going to start making money right out of the gate. That's generally not how it works. All right. Any business will tell you, and it doesn't matter, brick and mortar online doesn't matter that you are probably not going to be making any profit for a while. All right. But you might be hearing people say, well, you can just launch a product on Amazon. And once you start selling that product, you're going to be able to start making money. You will be able to start generating money and and revenue. Okay. But really, are you going to be able to profit? A lot of things go into a product launch sourcing the product, all of that stuff, keeping inventory up. When you're doing a physical product business, it actually becomes a little bit harder. Um, But this one story I want to share with you, uh, which I think is exactly the picture I want to paint for you, because this is, this is looking at it from another, another perspective or a, a, another angle. All right. So there was a husband and wife and they were both working in corporate at the time. Okay. 
And the wife had a little bit of a better job maybe, and the husband really didn't like his job at all. So he volunteered once they had kids that he would be the stay-at-home dad, okay? And so now he's going to stay home, but he still wants to be able to, you know, he still wants to be able to, uh, you know, contribute and he wants to be able to, you know, bring in some money. But so what they did is they lived off of her income and they started a business online selling products, okay? And that's on Amazon and on their own shopping uh, or in their own store on their own, using their own shopping cart, um, you know, different ways that they were monetizing. But they built this thing up, okay, over two and a half years. But the goal in the very beginning was we're not going to pull any money out of this business at all. We're just going to keep rolling it in to grow it, to keep feeding it. And that's one of the big problems I see where a lot of businesses, they will start pulling money too soon. And then they wonder where, uh, you know, the money's going or how they can fund more products. All right. So what he ended up doing and what they ended up doing was just committing to that and not worrying about profit until the time was right. And they, in their mind, they, they thought if I can build this thing up, I could probably sell it in two to three years. Okay, so the whole goal is to build it up to sell it. Okay, and then anyone that sells, uh, you know, businesses or properties for that matter, always tells you you're always going to get more or profit more when you sell. Okay, because you, either your money's tied up in the deal, like if you're doing real real estate, like like a, a brick and mortar, uh, or if you're building a business and you're growing it, especially if you have physical products, you are going to cash out at the end. And so that's what they did. And if my memory serves me right, it was somewhere around uh, 1.5 uh, to $2 million was the, the sale price after they also, their inventory was purchased back. All right. So let's just call it $2 million. So I don't know about you. Okay. And I'm not saying that you're going to build a business and sell it for $2 million, right? I'm not saying that at all. Uh, cause everything would have to be in, in alignment there and everything would have to go pretty smooth. But the point I'm trying to make here is they didn't go in this thing saying that they were going to, uh, start making money out of the gate. They're going to take all the money and roll it back in to the business. Okay. And then they cashed out. Now think about this. You've probably been raised like I was to invest your money for your retirement, right? And if you invest into a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA and you do it for 25, 30 years, there's a good chance that you will have some money to retire with and maybe a million dollars, maybe $3 million, whatever your financial advisor set you up with and had you thinking you're going to need to be able to live at least 20 to 30 years after you retire. Like we all follow that road, right? And so imagine that though. Let's say that you invested $20,000 into a business and the only thing that you were doing it for was to cash it out in two to three years, okay, and then make $2 million. Now, the word there, make, that is profit. That is what they made on the business. Now, if they had loans outstanding, they'd have to pay those off, but for most of these businesses, the, the loans are not that high because they're feeding the inventory with the profit. Now, if you start taking out loans, yes, you'll have to pay the loan back and then all that stuff. But we're assuming that that's not the case, right? So you put in $20,000 into a business and you just keep feeding it with the money that's coming in from the business. You keep adding gas to the fire, right? Well, then at the end, you're going to be able to sell the business for, you know, anywhere from two and a half to four and a half, sometimes five X, uh, as far as your, uh, your earnings, your profit, uh, your net income. All right. And so in this case, you know, he didn't have to wait 30 years to put into an IRA, right? He cashed it out and now they got 2.5 or 2 million, whatever it was. I think it was like 2 million. Um, and, and th this is commonplace though, in that world, of people that build businesses with the intent to sell. They understand it. Now you can take this a level, a level uh, below this. And maybe what you do is you build these little niche sites, right? And there's a market right now that is being underserved. And uh, my good friend, Spencer uh, Hawes over at Niche Pursuits, he's actually got a company now that does this. And they, they have sites that they buy uh, for between like, I'd say 5,000 to a hundred thousand dollars. And they're being sold for that price. Okay. And the reason is, is because there's a lot of people that are buying businesses that are bigger. And the reason why I'm telling you all this, guys, is because 
if you look at the long term, the long game, right, it's going to be easier and you're not going to be disappointed, okay? So again, that's why I'm sharing this with you. But I want to share with you these, these, uh, you know, these causes for businesses failing. And one of them is, if I was to summarize everything, it's because they don't have a good picture of the overall plan, right? And they don't stick to that. And uh, that's what I'm going to share with you, okay? So uh, this actually came from smallbiztrends.com. Okay, smallbiztrends.com. They're a, a very, very well-known website that uh, publishes a lot of small business news and stuff. And I found this article. I'm going to read you some parts to it or kind of give you my, my highlights from it. Uh, but this really made me look at all of the, the, the different things that I've been thinking and really put it into some facts, into some numbers, because they did the research. Um, I'll link everything up in the show notes as well. This episode is 806, so the episode show notes will be at theamazingseller.com forward slash 806. You can check them out there. Um, but uh, it's pretty interesting. And uh, I looked at their numbers. They're getting like, gosh, like 1.5 million organic searches to their website. So they're a pretty a pretty big deal. Um, so um, we want to we, we wanna pay attention to that. So let's get to it, all right? So I'm pulling up that article right now. And the thing that I really wanted to talk about first was, and this is actually, you know, this is actually kind of encouraging in a sense, that if you are starting a small business, uh, well, first off, 69% of U.S. entrepreneurs start their businesses at home, okay? So that's happening more and more. So that's awesome. That's actually good news. Um, so let me just get to the uh, the startup failure rate statistics, okay? So of small businesses, and this was done over a, let's see here, a four-year period. This here, this part of it was from 2014 to 2018, so they obviously had to run a case study. Um, but from all of the businesses that started in 2014, um, 80% made it to second year, 2015. And then 70% made it to third year, 2016. 62% made it to the fourth year, 2017. And 56% made it to the fifth year. So 56% made it to the fifth year. That leaves us with 44% that did not, okay? So they started and they didn't make it. They failed, okay? And that happens. It happens a lot, all right? But, you know, on, on the upside, 56% made it. Now, we don't know if they're profitable. They made it, right? They're paying the bills, Okay. And how many times have you ever watched a show like Shark Tank and someone comes in and they go, yeah, we've been growing this business for five years and we're making, you know, our top line revenue is like 4 million, 5 million, whatever. And they're all like, great. And they're like, what are you netting? What are you paying yourself? Oh, we're not. We're actually in, in the negative. And they're like, well, what are you paying yourself for a salary? Like 60 grand. So they're making 60 grand over five years to build that business. Is it really worth it at that point? Okay, so that's what you got to actually ask yourself. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead through these nine causes of small business failures. All right. The number one cause, the number one cause is no market need the services or the business stuff that they're offering or whatever, the products, the services, the content. There's no market out there. They're thinking it's a great idea, they've done no validation, and then that is why it failed, okay? So you hear me talk a lot about how to validate your market, that's why it's so important. So whether you're starting uh, an e-commerce uh, brand that is going to start on Amazon and you're gonna build off of Amazon, or if you're currently doing that, you always, always wanna make sure that you validate the market and that there is demand for the market, okay? I look at all different areas in this, I look at, the traffic potential, number one, because if I can get traffic and eyeballs, then I can figure out next what would they want to buy or what can they buy or should they buy, right, or that they're searching for. So that's what we do inside of Brand Creators Academy, uh, which is also we follow the playbook, which again can be found at brandcreatorsbook.com. So definitely go check that out. All right, so number two, running out of cash, okay, 29% run out of cash. Okay, so if you are familiar with running a either a brick and mortar with inventory or inventory because you have an Amazon uh, so-called business or an e-commerce business, you know that it takes money to keep that inventory up. 
right? Every time you're getting ready for a fourth quarter, it's stressful because you're just like, I don't know if I'm ordering enough of this inventory. I want to make sure I have enough. And then you order a whole bunch and you hope you sell it, right? So you're sitting on a lot of inventory. My good, uh, my, my good friend, uh, Mike Jackness, uh, he was sitting on a million dollars in inventory. No wonder why the guy couldn't sleep at night, right? Like that's what we're talking about. So a lot of times people run out of cash. It's not managed well, or it's inventory, whatever it is running out of cash. So that's a big one. So if you're thinking about starting with physical products, understand it's going to take cash. All right. And if you're not going to be patient and roll that cash back in, where are you going to get the cash to roll out product two, three, and four and five, right? It's going to take some cash. Okay. And then you might have to get a loan. And then if you get a loan, then you're stressed that you got to pay back the loan. And hopefully that you don't have, you know, this competition coming in and knocking your, uh, you know, your sales down and all that stuff. All right. Now, number three, I thought this was interesting, not the right team. So if they have a partner, if they have someone that's helping them or people that are helping them, not the right team. So it's really smart too, that when you start to grow, you grow slow and you hire the right people. That is a big one too, by the way. All right, let's see. Number four, this is got out competed. All right. Now I don't care if this is up the road and you own, uh, you know, a, uh, a company that is a, uh, maybe it's a local brewery or something like that. And you get someone else down here that's going to have their own local brewery. You're going to have competition, but on Amazon or, you know, anywhere, eBay, any of the, the big, uh, Etsy, it doesn't matter. Any of the, those bigger channels, you're always going to have competition. But right now we all know Amazon is, I mean, they're coming in, you know, in droves, right? Like we, I think last year I heard a, a statistic, there was 250,000 Chinese sellers, just Chinese sellers coming in which they're closer to the source. So obviously it's going to be easier for them to launch products. Um, that's your competition. So again, we got to think about that. And that's why when we're building a brand, we're thinking about diversifying, not just on that one channel, not with just one product. And we're able to really find more, uh, you know, assets to deploy for traffic and all of these different things. Okay. But that's a big one. That's number four, um, getting, um, basically beat by the competition. Okay. And that was 19%. And then the next one, was, and this is number five, pricing and cost issues. So even though you might see top line, oh, that person says they're doing a million dollars. That person says they're doing $5 million. What you don't realize is their profit margins are like 10%. How do you support a business or even an income on 10%? That's a hundred grand for a million dollars, right? Like there's other ways you can make a million dollars without having the headaches of a million dollar business that is, you know, so cost intensive or, you know, dependent on, uh, you know, having a lot of cash flow coming through. Now, if you have a blog that is getting traffic and I'll give you an example, we have a brand right now that we've been building for about three years and we're getting a lot of traffic and we have turned on since last year, uh, a network called ad thrive. That network is paying us now between four and $5,000 just from the traffic that is coming to that site. They don't have to click anything. They don't have to buy anything just from visitors being there. Okay. So that doesn't cost us anything, by the way. The only thing it costs us is about 50 bucks a month for hosting. Cause we have a dedicated server. The web domain is a one time per year that we have to, which we bought a five year, uh, which is about 10 bucks a year. Right. And then, uh, we have what else to keep the site running. We have our theme that we might have to have updated, whatever, right? Like not a lot. And so if that's all we did four to $5,000 coming in on a regular basis, nothing to do with inventory, right? So that's again, how we can grow and scale, uh, and also diversify our business. All right. So anyway, that's uh, pricing and cost issues. Um, the next one here was very interesting. That's number six user unfriendly product. Okay. So basically they get the product and they're like, uh, this doesn't work that great. Right. So again, like negative reviews or feedback or just people telling people, you know, it's not good. Right. So then it's a product issue. And if your if your you know, business is, is based off of a hero product, well, that is a big problem because then all of your revenue is going to be affected. And this could be, you have a great product and then you have a flaw with it that doesn't get caught in inspection. And then all of a sudden, you know, what are you going to do now? Right. You got to pull all that inventory, whatever. Um, so that one there was interesting. The next one, number seven product without a business model. I can't make this stuff up guys. This is in this report that was done, right? A product without a business model, 17% 
was the reason why businesses failed. That means you said, I'm going to go on and see what product is selling great on Amazon, and I'm going to launch my own product. And then from there, I'm just going to do pay-per-click and just get a whole bunch of sales coming through Amazon. That's my business, okay? That's risky, okay? That is very risky. There's no business built around that. It's a product. So you got to ask yourself, is, is your business right now product dependent? Is it dependent on that one product? What happens if that product goes away? What have you done to diversify? Okay. So that's a big one. Okay. And again, this is everything. It's so funny. Cause when I was going through this, it, I, I didn't do it intentionally to look at this and go, Oh, everything kind of applies to my brand building model, right? In the playbook, but it does, uh, again, little shameless plug here, brandcreatorsbook.com. Grab a copy. All right. So, uh, that is number seven, uh, product without a business model. Okay. This one here, and I'm, I'm surprised this was this far down the list. Number eight, poor marketing. Marketing is huge, guys. I can have the best product in the world, but if I suck at, at marketing my product or my business, what good is it, right? I can have the best brewery in town, but if I don't know how to get the word out, no one's going to know about it. Marketing to me is so, so important. And when you learn marketing, okay, which you're learning here on this podcast and, you know, on this show is really about how do you get traffic? How do you get eyeballs? How do you turn that traffic into money, into sales? How do you convert it, right? So it's one thing to get the traffic, but then how do you convert it into a sale, right? And that's where a lot of people drop the ball, okay? So that's a big one, and, I, and I'm surprised it's that far down on the list, but it is, but it's still a big one, okay? Poor marketing, that was 14%. Um, and then um, nine is ignore customers, basically just customer service. Like seriously, if you have a business, the best thing that you can do is have the best customer service because that is where you can shine. Okay. I mean, I'll give you an example. Uh, I was recently looking to get some work done on the house and I called like five people. One person called me back. Like that's huge in itself. Then once I had that done, I had a little bit of an issue. It was actually a fence I had installed. I had a little bit of an issue with a pole, call them up, boom, back, like answer the phone, like second ring. That right there, I'm going to be telling people about that, that business now, right? It's the same thing goes. doesn't matter if you're online. You're going to tell people about it, okay, because you had a great experience. Don't underutilize that. So many people, they look at the one sale or the one person that came in and they're gone, right? I want to bring that person back. I want that person to tell people about it, right? If you're building a website and the idea is to have people come there and get good information and tell people like, oh, you've got to go to the Bass Fanatics blog. They're awesome over there. There's so many great pieces of content. I've caught more fish now because I'm part of that community, whatever. Like if you do that, that's going to spread the word right? And then on, on uh, social media, it becomes even easier to share because they make it easy, right? You have share buttons and you have pins here and you have all these different things, right? So don't underestimate the power in customer service. It is huge. All right. So let me just give you a little recap here. Number one, okay? No market, okay? You, you think you got a market. You don't do your research. You find out there's no market, okay? Number two, running out of cash. Now, here, this is a big one. If you're running a physical product business, be prepared to fund it. And the way that you fund it is by any money you make on product one, that funds product two and then three, right? And you can, so you got to think about that. So that's a big one. Um, okay. Three, um, not the right team. So make sure that you hire the right people and do not hire people just to hire people either, by the way, uh, you want these people to actually, uh, be, a resource for your business and a, uh, a way to help you grow your business. Um, do it slow, but, uh, do it smart. Okay. Um, so that's the right team, um, getting, uh, out competed. So basically the competition. So again, if you have not done the brand building stuff, you don't have your own email list, you don't have your own traffic source. You need to start working on that because the competition is coming. I promise you that. All right. And then pricing and cost issues. So again, here, we want to make sure that we have good pricing. We've done the math that we know that our price point is here, but even if we had to drop it a little bit, we're still going to be okay. Don't figure uh, that you're always going to be able to get that price. Um, and if you are going to get that price, you better have a really, really solid brand. Okay. And then uh, user uh, unfriendly product. 
So basically a bad product or a product that has a flaw, fix it. Make sure that you're always paying attention to that. A product without a business model, that's a big one. Ask yourself, does this product serve a market? Does this product uh, actually not just stand on its own, but does it allow me to build a brand and a business around it? Um, so that's a big one. And then uh, poor marketing. So make sure that your marketing is there. Make sure that you're learning about marketing. Not too much, just what it will take to get attention in your market and then how to convert that into sales. Like that's a big one. And then the last one is customer service. You got to make sure that your customer service is on point. It's so easy, but so many people don't do it because they don't look at it as that is a way for me to get great, you know, great reviews, great testimonials, and just people that are going to talk about my business and come back for more. All right. So that's pretty much what I wanted to share here with you. Uh, this is really, really important because you can just take what I just shared with you and make sure that you're aware of it. So when you do either start your business or take your business to the next level, you consider each and every one of these. You might even want to bookmark this or come back to this or write this stuff down or go to the show notes and, and go to the transcripts and print that out. There's a PDF option there because this stuff is super, super important. And to get the show notes, this is episode 806. So you can head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash 8. And if you want the Brand Creators Playbook, head on over to brandcreatorsbook.com. All right, guys, so that's it. That's going to wrap it up. As always, remember, I'm here for you. I believe in you, and I am rooting for you. But you have to. You have to. Come on, say it with me. Say it loud. Say it proud. Take action. Have an awesome, amazing day, and I'll see you right back here on the next episode. Now go get them. Boom, boom, boom.